<laughs> There's hair in my face. It's what happens when you wear lip gloss. <laughs> Well, hello there. I'm Nusha, also known as Ferocious and Pretty Pens, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, one, the setup is different. Uh, I'm glad, so glad you noticed. And if you didn't notice, don't feel bad. It's just a little titch changed. I got a different microphone and I am recording on my phone from now on just because it's a million times easier. So hopefully sound is all good, video is all good, etc., etc., and such. For today's video, we are busting out Pelican Edelstein's newest addition to their ink line, Rose Quartz. I ordered this quite a while ago along with a pen that <laughs> ended up not coming because that's been on back order. And I finally have my hands on the ink and I thought, let's do an ink one pager together and talk about this ink of the year. Now, with that said, Pelican Edelstein usually releases a pen along with an ink every year. Last year, it was Appet Appetite, Appetite, uh, Bon Appetit, I don't know how to pronounce it. And uh, that is this color here that I have. And um, we don't know what the color is gonna be for the pen this year, but they've already released the ink. Now, it's been a while since Pelican has introduced another pink pen. And the last time they did this was in 2015. I went onto Pelican's Perch and I did a little bit of research and indeed it was 2015. The ladies collection, pink stripe or pink or whatever, uh, M600. And that people went wild for that. And it sold out from my understanding fairly quickly. This was about a year, a year and a half before I got into the hobby. So apparently people really like pink pelicans, I guess. And now you can buy this on the aftermarket off of eBay or whatever. But I warn you, the price was $450, $60 when it came out. You can expect to pay anywhere from $800 all the way to $1,200 if you try to buy it now on aftermarket. But it's just the way the cookie crumbles with some of these pens that sell out really quickly. So one other thing that I want to point out, because I would be a bad feminist if I didn't, brands don't mark your things ladies collection just because something is pink. As women, we already know we pay a pink tax for things. So don't be rude. I'm talking to you, Pelican, because of what you did in the past. And I'm also talking to you, Mont Blanc. You are notorious for doing this. Not that you're ever gonna see this, but yeah, please don't do that. Um, it kind of gets on my nerves and it's not cool. It's kind of like when Bic released those Bic Crystal Ladies pens. And if you haven't seen the reviews on, on Amazon for these pens, uh, one, let me just show you a screen clip real quick of some of these reviews. They're, they're the most hilarious things that you've ever read. Like, this pen, now let me break through the glass ceiling. With this pen, I'm really able to get through my day, whereas before it wasn't happening because I'm a woman. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it's just for fun. I'll put the link below if you want to go in and read some of those. They're just, they're really funny to me. Um, but anyway, that's me being on a soapbox for a second and saying stuff that if you're a dude, maybe you didn't want to hear. And if you're a female, um, maybe you stand behind me. Um, but we're all entitled to our opinions and th those are mine. And it's my channel, so Nana Nana Boo Boo. <laughs> it, it always comes back to Nana Nana Boo Boo with this. Anyway. Back to this ink review. Um, so that 2015 was the last time Pelican released a, a pink pen and there wasn't uh, an ink that went with it as there is with the M200 uh, line. So um, in the last couple of releases that they've been doing of different stones, the theme started with the, uh, uh, well, it's they've been doing it for quite a while because they released the Aquamarine too and Smoky Quartz and those are all stones. And they got a little spicy when they introduced the Star Ruby and after that the Moonstone. Those all have sparkly glimmeriness to it and the Golden Barrel, which if you haven't watched in my hits and misses, that's an absolute hit. I love it. 
but I'm interested to see if they're going to release a solid colored pen with this because of the fact that I was expecting shimmer in this ink and there's no shimmer. So I'm, I'm guessing it's probably going to be a solid color and I can't wait to see it. But since this is purely about the ink, let's switch camera angles and let's do an ink one pager together. I'll walk you through the ink one pager. We might fast forward through some of the stuff that's not very interesting. Um, and if you've never seen me do an ink one pager before, my very first video on this channel, Van Diemen's Tasmanian Robin Pink, was an ink one pager. So um, I'll put the cards up uh, in the corner if you're interested to go back and look at two, three years ago, <laughs> the way that I was filming. So with that said, I'll hand it over to myself out in the field doing an ink one pager, and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so here is the bottle. Pretty similar to every other bottle that they've released. It has the name of the ink, Rose Quartz. And when I first got this, I was a little bit surprised that it doesn't have any shimmer in it because they released their last two inks with a shimmer. So this was uh, kind of new and different, but the same at the same time, if that makes any sense whatsoever. With this, I'm gonna be doing an ink one pager. You've seen me maybe do one of these before in some of my very first videos. If you haven't, I'll put the link to it in the cards, but I'll walk you through it again in this video with this specific ink because I think this is a pretty cool ink. I've already swatched it on a swatch card and it looks like it has some really interesting properties, even as just like an art ink with the purple and the base of this pink. So I'm excited to see what it's going to look like with shading and on paper. And speaking of paper, this is my usual handy dandy number 18 dot grid Rhodia notepad. I'll repeat some of these steps on Tomato River or Tomoy River paper and we'll compare the how it looks on the two different papers because paper actually does make a difference. And I know, you know, Tomoy River is a little bit of a relic. It's still around. Uh, somebody ended up buying out the, the presses and the machinery to be able to continue making it. But all I have is the old stock Tomoy River. So I can't show you if you get new stock and who knows what new stock is and when they're cutting it in and any of that stuff. I have no knowledge of this. I haven't been keeping track of this because I have a massive pile of the original to get through because I was, you know, selfish and bought a bunch of it <laughs> when I found out this was going on. I have my Lamy Vista, my normal Lamy Vista that I use for these. And we're just gonna fill this up. It's clean. Get a decent amount of ink in there. And the next thing we'll fill, as soon as I find the, the back to this, there we go. And we're gonna stick, which nib are we gonna stick on here? We're gonna stick a 1.9 on here, cause that's what I usually start with. And we'll put this to the side and then let's get the eyedropper because the other pen that I always use for my ink one pagers is this Waterman number 12 flex just because I freaking love the nib on this. The pen has seen better days but I literally use this thing for every single ink that I'm going to test. So this is also clean. I'm just going to put some of this ink in there and the thing too is when I do this I don't dip the pen for this. I literally um, fill it every single time because it gives you the same performance. You're not, you know, dependent on how much did you dip the, the pen? Did you release the inner minks of some of the ink before, you know, you started? And then we'll just dip it just to try and get it to start going. Little love taps here and there. Okay, I think it's flowing now, so that's good. Now, onto the paper for the very first time. And don't forget to get a 
don't forget to grab one of these to put underneath my hand. This is just tracing paper. The best paper to use to prevent true smudging underneath your hand is glassine. And I have a bunch of that, but I also have a bunch of <laughs> this tracing paper I need to get through. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me change this angle a little bit so that it's not all weird and cockeyed for you guys, since I like to write at an angle. Okay. All right, so there you go. I can already tell that I'm going to love this color. It has a really interesting sort of gloomy feel to it with that purple in there. And I just wonder if it's going to sheen at all when we get it on Tomoe. I always misspell Edelstein. Edel. because I always get the E and the I backwards here, T E. Stein, like a stein of beer. Mm. Yeah, it's morning when I'm recording this, so there'll be none of that. And if you're watching this later and you are having a beer, remember kids, 21 and over in the US. I don't know, such a weirdo. Okay, now we move on to the Waterman. This is ooh, a little bit of railroading there. The interesting thing about using Rhodia for this is that it's not like the best paper in the world out there. And with certain pigments, you see a lot of feathering. Those pigments are usually reds and some greens. So we'll see what this does. As it dries, so we do the pen here. Now for the rest of this, I'm going to do it off camera and we'll come back and do the drawing and the water brush sample together just because you probably don't want to see me write the name of the pen over and over again because that's, that's kind of boring. No offense to me, but it is. So Maybe we'll do like a fast speed through it and put some cool music in the background. I haven't decided yet. Maybe we'll do it that way. Just because there are certain places with the different nibs that I swap on the Vista that tell you a little something about the ink because I was kind of surprised that this railroaded a little bit in this uh, wet noodle of a vintage flex nib. So I'm interested to see how this is going to do in a 1.9, which is what this is. Looks like it's doing well and it's flowing all right, no issues. Uh, it doesn't make the 1.9 more draggy or difficult to use, and it seems like it did pretty well in that. Okay, I take it back. The railroading was just a me thing, and you can see some aspects of shading 
in this writing sample. So now we'll go on to the 1.5, make sure it's primed and ready to go. So I'm using a new microphone to record since I broke the microphone that was on my, that I was using an external microphone on my camera. And I kind of, I don't know, I'm hoping that it picks up the sound of the nib on the paper because there's something very ASMR-y about that. I love it. So real quick, I forgot, but put this back on. No. This is where I usually write the name of the ink and the maker. So I use the 1.1 for this. Wow, my writing got like real weird. Oh no, I was gonna misspell Edelstein. I really wanna put the I before the E because it's I before E except after C. <laughs> and it doesn't apply to German, I guess. Okay, and then we take the flex nib and we write There we go. Yeah, I think the railroading in the beginning was just it, the pen needed a little bit more time with the ink in there to really get used to it. That turned out really funky, but I don't care because it's just a swatch card. <laughs> um, but I think the, the railroading was just it needed a little bit of time for the ink to be in there before it was ripe and ready to go, but no issues there. And I was flexing a lot. And then down here, which I don't think you can even see. Eh, usually put a little area so that I can record my thoughts. This used to be the place that I said the verdict dun 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 like cue the law and order uh <laughs> sound of the gavel the verdict and i change it to impressions because the, truly these are the impressions that i have of this ink on this specific paper so that's the one thing that's been a little Dated here and when I photograph these usually this swatch card sits on top of that so normally nobody really gets to see this portion okay and that dried fairly quickly so I can put that on top of there and then we go on to I like to do this a little bit backwards because I want to end with the broad dip so I start with the timeout. I forgot. I usually put something underneath the pages so that there's no, if there's any bleed through or anything like that, I can salvage the next page and I'm not wasting paper. So, okay. Now we are here. And it's, to my eyes, totally legible in a fine so far. Um, we'll have to look up close to see if there's any shading. And 
then we go to the medium. Oof, there's something about watching the ink pool as you're writing. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but usually shading happens more so, at least for me, when I write in print versus cursive. And for cursive, if I angle my cursive, it's not as evident for some reason. I don't know if it's just the way that I write cursive when I angle or what, but that's a thing, at least in my world. Let's make sure we're getting the benefit of the color. I think this was, had a little bit of water in there. Uh -oh. Come on now. That's the thing I like about using Lamy's for this. You can just swap the nibs and I'm not using one, two, three, four, five, six different pens to do this. It's just the two. Over the course of the last month, I have been getting caught up on all of my ink one pagers because every ink that I've tried from sample to own has to have an ink one pager. That's the rule in my house. It's a stupid self-made rule, but it helps me ensure that I have a good understanding of every ink that I try and have a record of it. Now with that said, when I took the, a break from social media the other year, I had a ton of samples and a ton of new bottles of inks and I am getting caught up. So in the last three weeks, four weeks, I have done over 200 and some odd ink one pagers. <laughs> so that's been a lot of fun and my hands have been super inky. But the good news is that that's how you know I'm in it. I'm loving it. And I can't stop, won't stop. The other thing is I found a really great way to get ink off of your hands. So the tried and true method is just take a shower and wash your hair a lot and that gets it off. But if you don't have the ability to hop in the shower, or don't have time, because I don't know, you have a lot of hair like me, that's not a very sustainable way of doing things. So I might record a video on how I get ink off of my hands after I have like a, a crazy incident that's more than what it looks like right now. Looks like it just like right now, it looks like I just touched a couple of Smurfs and I poked it, you know, um, one of the Sesame Street characters and that's it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So the next portion is the water brush portion. Now, what I like to do with the water brush is I like to make sure that it is primed and has water in the bristles. So then that way you can get some really cool artifacts. And this has some blue teal ink in it right now. So let me just clean that off. And make sure that we're not cross contaminating colors because this should be completely clean in order to do this, to get a good read. I'll probably cut this part out of the video because nobody has the time. Nobody has the patience for the time to want to watch this. I'm even bored right now. Are you bored? Yeah. Or maybe I'll leave it in because I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel with a water brush. Okay, this new microphone is like making me ASMR style. Yes. We're cleaning our water brush. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna stop. Um, okay, so if you want a tutorial on how to do water brush lettering or just brush lettering, leave it in the comments because this is another way to practice calligraphy on a bigger scale and 
it's also a great way to use up a lot of ink. This got way too light. And I do this, oops, I do this specifically because I want to know what this is going to look like as an art ink because I use my inks for more than just what I'm doing. Um, for more than just writing. I use them to draw and sometimes paint with. So, um... Oh my god, I'm going to run out of space. Well, it is what it is. At least I was able to salvage where the where I dropped the, the ink on the paper. <laughs> um, but I do this specifically to get a good read on what the ink is going to do on paper because the cool thing about fountain pen ink and using it for ink art so basically as like a watercolor is that there are sometimes multiple different pigments and colors that are used to create the end effect of the ink and so even right now which it's still drying but you can see kind of like what you saw here there is a pink as well as a purple shade in here so this would be really fun to use in order to do different flowers and things like that if you can learn how the pink shows up versus that that purple color like is the purple color the remnant when you brush away the pink and the pink is you know the thing that seeps into the paper last that could be a really fun thing to know in order to do some sort of a watercolor-esque flower if you're so inclined. Okay, now I'm gonna wait for this to dry and I'll do that off camera. I'll do um, some artsy fartsy thing over here like a rose quartz mm, stone of some sort. I'll write a quote. I will also do all of this on Tomoe River paper and we'll come back and we'll compare. So here is everything said and done. We have Cosmo Air Light, we have the Rhodia, and we have the Tomoe 52 GSM. So let me zoom out, or that's the wrong way. Let me zoom out a little bit and we can kind of take a look at this uh, and do like a, a comparison. Well, maybe I should have stayed zoomed in. I'm just gonna make you all sick. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I will never do that again. <laughs> so here's what this all looks like. Uh, the 52 versus the Rhodia and let me just move this guy out of the way so you don't get distracted because I distract very easily and I just want to make sure so the main difference here between these two is that on the 52 GSM which is on your left hand side and on the Rhodia you see a lot more chromatic shading overall in just writing with a super um, wet nib like the Waterman Flex, whereas you don't see it as much in the Waterman Flex on the Rhodia. And everything else is pretty consistent. Um, the one thing I'll say though is that it appears to look a lot lighter on this paper than it does on the Rhodia. So the Tomoe, for whatever reason, it just kind of is a lighter ink on there. And for some of you that might be illegible, um, and you might just need to use a wetter nib. I'll say this as I've said it in other videos. I use a Lamy because Lamy's are known to be a little bit on the drier side. So if there's any issues that I'm going to notice, I'm going to hundred percent notice it in a Lamy. So that might just be an artifact of the fact that it is a drier nib and on the Rhodia, it seeps into the paper a lot faster than it does on the, um, Tomo away so it doesn't release as much ink so that's the main difference that I see um, between the two and like you can see it oh is that light not on balls 
balls to the wall. Hold on. Yeah, the light's off. Nope, it was on. My bad. In the water brush, same thing. For whatever reason, on the Tomoe, it just comes out being a little bit lighter. So now let's bring in the Cosmo Air Light. And the Cosmo Air Light is fairly similar to the Tomoe versus the um, Rhodia in the way that the ink just overall appears to be a little bit lighter. But the main difference when you look at these two is how much less chromatic shading you kind of see. It tries to, the ink tries to stay together on the Cosmo Air Light. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Cat hair, excuse me. Um, but it just, all in all, very similar, um, but in a fatter, wetter nib, you're gonna notice a little bit more, I don't know, uniqueness on Tomboy than you are on a Cosmo Air Light. But that's that. Um, from soup to nuts and everything in between. Those are the ink one pagers and writing samples, so I will hand it back to myself in the studio. Aw, yeah. Well, all right, there you have it. Back to myself from the field. Thanks a lot, Nusha. Thanks for taking one for the team and getting ink all over your hands and, you know, writing stuff for us. Um, all in all, I think this is a fantastic ink. If you are at all a fan of pink inks, this is right up your alley. While this ink doesn't sheen, the shading on it is beautiful, especially if you put it in a really wet nib, really broad nib, you get this chromatic effect of that purple sh shining through. And I just, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the pen that they're gonna release is gonna look like. Um, when I think of rose quartz though, I think of something that's a little more muted when I think of that color or that stone itself. I don't really think of this bright pink that they chose, but it is what it is. It's still beautiful. It's still gorgeous. I just hope that whatever the pen is that they release, instead of it matching rose quartz, it matches the ink, which they've been known to do, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, have you seen this ink in action? Have you thought about buying it? What are your thoughts based off of what I've shown? I'm really interested to know, so leave it in the comments below. And um, if you're not already subscribed, you should subscribe because we do great and fun things here. They're not really that great. I mean, I think they're great because I'm biased. But, you know, if you remove the bias out of it, we do fun things here. And I make a complete and utter fool of myself in every video because that's just the way that it is. Uh, because there's bloopers at the very end. But anyway, I know you've been watching my videos, so you should go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell so that you're notified when I post a new one. I usually post at least one video a week, sometimes two if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling myself, <laughs> and uh, I'd hate for you to miss it. Anyway, I hope you're all doing great wherever in the world you are, and we'll see you on the next one, and don't forget, keep writing. <laughs>
and uh, yeah, it feels nice. And I'm wearing a rose quartzy looking camisole underneath my shirt because I wanted to match the video. But then it turns out that that I don't match this color at all. So I tried. <laughs>